hallelujah, hallelujah, and welcome to Beyond the Veil Worship Center. We just want to take this time and just praise God for a minute, just tell him we're grateful. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God. We lift you up. We magnify you, Lord God. There's nobody like you, Jesus, Lord God. In spite of what you're going through, we, I implore you, I, 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 I ask you that you would just find a way to clap your hands. Just find a way to lift him up. I know you might be, you might have pain in your body. You might have a situation going on in your house right now. But I tell you, if you are able to just open up your mouth and give God what he is due, he is still worthy. He is still good. He is still God, and he is still in control. So I just want to tell you, to welcome Holy Spirit, first of all. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Uh, we would just like to welcome you to Beyond the Veil Worship Center. We would like to ask you that you hit the like and the share button and just share this good news with your friends and um, your family. Amen. This, the word that's coming today is from the throne room, and we just want to be able to share this with everyone. We just want to thank you. I want to give honor where honor is due this morning and thank God for our apostle, Wanda J. Sisko. We thank God for her life. We thank God for her ministry. Hallelujah. We thank God for the anointing that's on her life. Oh, God. It's, it's her anointing that woke up some of our anointing. Amen. That helped us discover who we are spiritually. So we just thank God for Apostle Wanda J. Sisko. I'd like to thank God for Beyond the Veil Worship Center. Amen. And all my brothers and sisters in ministry. I'd like to thank God for my wife and my children, my mother, my family. God is just good. He's better to us than we deserve. Amen. So, we're going to pray, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Amen? Amen. God, we thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you because everything you do, you do it perfectly. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, because everything that happens to us was sifted through your will and is what you allowed, Lord God, to make us better for you, Lord God, and for your people, Lord God. Lord God, I ask that I will decrease completely, Lord God, and that your Holy Spirit will rise up in me, Lord God, and that every word that come from this pulpit would be from the throne room of grace, Lord God. Lord God, I've asked, Lord God, to touch the hearers of the word, Lord God. Lord God, that their, their ears will be tended to your voice, so you said in your word, Lord God. Lord God, that we want an answer to a stranger's voice, Lord God, but you said that your sheep know your voice, Lord God. Lord God, so I pray, Lord God, that we will be tender to your voice, Lord God, and that our hearts will be open to your word today. We thank you, Lord God, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's open up our Bibles. And I will be reading the Amplified. We're going to do Joshua 6, 1 through 6. Give you a second to get that. And it reads, Now Jericho, a city with high walls, was highly, was tightly closed because of the, peop of the people's fear of the sons of Israel. No one went out or came in. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho unto your hand and its king and the mighty warriors. Now you shall march around the city, all the men of war circling the city once. You should do this once each day for six days. Also, seven priests shall carry seven trumpets made of ram's horns ahead of the ark. Then on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall cry out with a great shout, battle cry, and the wall of the city will fall down in its place, and the people shall go up, each man going straight ahead, climbing over the rubble. And I want to highlight or read again verse 2. The Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho unto your hand with its kings and the mighty warriors. And for our title today, for our thought while we go over this scripture, is it's already yours. Amen. It is already yours. See, one thing, before we go dive into the scripture, one thing I want us to understand is that in heaven, everything has already happened. Everything has already happened. Even when, when the disciples were to Jesus and said, how do we pray? And he said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. In heaven, we aren't waiting to be healed. In heaven, we're not waiting to be set free. In heaven, we're not waiting for our business to get off the ground. Everything in heaven has already happened. This is why um, the teaching about third heaven that we've been receiving here is so important. Because when you go to this place, you come back and have no choice but to prophesy. Because while you're there, you begin to see things that's already taken place. It's already happened there. There's no time there. So it's already done. It's already done. This is why the prophets was able to go in and out and prophesy because they was going to a place where everything had happened already. This is why when Jesus would talk to people, it would feel a little confusing because he lived in a place for eternity where everything had already happened. So when they told him Lazarus was dead, it's hard for him to be like, yeah, he is dead. So he got to find a way between his 100% man and 100% God. He got to find his way because he lived in these two places. So if, I, so if Jesus come and say he's dead, but he knows he's actually alive, so he just met him in the middle and said he's asleep. This is why Jesus talked the way he talked. This is why we talk the way we talk, because we understand things are all, have already taken place. And when the prophet or, or when God came and spoke to Joshua, he said, the city is already, he said, I gave it to you. Not I'm giving it to you, not it's going to come. He didn't even give them the instructions yet. Oh, ain't that like God? Sometimes he tell you what you're going to get or what you have, and you don't even have the instructions. And you're worried about the instructions, and because you're so worried, you don't have time to put your hands together and thank God because it's already yours. It already belonged to you. Everything, if you can find a way to step out of time and into third heaven where time don't exist, you, listen, it's like when uh, Peter jumped out the boat and started walking on water. He jumped out of time into a place that was timeless. This is why he couldn't sink, because there was no time. It didn't matter. This is where miracles are being done, in a place where everything already, so I just want to encourage you real quick. Ooh, we preaching already. I want to encourage you. I don't know what you've been praying for. I don't know what you've been laboring for, but if you can find a way to access third heaven, you will understand that it already happened. The disciples that belong to John the Baptist said, how come we got to fast and Jesus' disciples don't got to fast? And he said, because they're already with Jesus. See, if you're already there, you don't got to pray as much. You don't got to fast as much. I've already accessed a place where everything is already happening. He said, they don't got to fast because they're with him. We're fasting to get there, but they are already there. Everything has already happened. Who, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Who, that's a good place to wave your hands. That's a good place to shout. That's a good place to tell God, thank you. With all the prayers we have or requests on the altar for him, it's already happened. It's already done. So how do we access this place? Oh, I'm going off my notes now. The way we access, what are they doing in heaven? They're constantly worshiping God. Oh, God, they're constantly opening up their mouths and telling God who he is. If you want to access this place, just start worshiping God. Start thanking God because it's already done. And people might think you're crazy in the hospital clapping your hands. They might think you're crazy while you're at court signing a foreclosure but and you're clapping your hands saying thank you because they don't understand that it's already done. This is what you see. But Jesus said he's just sleep. Who, Lord. Who, Jesus, God, I thank you that everything has already happened. But before we even go deeper into Joshua, we can't do that without talking about Moses a little bit. Without talking about, because this is a battle that Joshua is going to have to fight for the first time without Moses. See, if you remember, remember Moses is the one who held his hands up while Joshua fought. Now Moses ain't there to hold his hands up. See, sometimes God will, God will flip it on you sometimes. The thing that you was depending on through all your other fights is now gone, and now you're questioning yourself, can I still fight with different weapons? Can I still fight with a different circle? Can I still fight with different friends? Can I still fight in a different ministry? Is it still going to work? Now that Moses, Lord have mercy, is gone. And you got to understand who Moses was. Moses was a bad boy now. Moses, 
out, out of all the stuff and the miracles I read in the Bible, Moses did some of the most incredible things. God used this man so powerfully, a man that was on the run for murder. All right? America's most wanted, or uh, uh, Israel's most I don't know. Uh, Hebrew's most wanted. He <laughs> was on the run, and stuttering, not educated, spent his life in the field. And God says, I'm going to use this man to deliver my people. And through Moses, Joshua's generation was delivered. This is the guy that helped me get out. And now he's gone. And God used him so powerfully, he shook the world with Moses. Plagues, locusts, frogs, um, people was getting scars and warps all over themselves, raining hell from the sky, all the animals dying. God was shake, oh Lord, help me Jesus. God will shake the world until his people are free. Oh Lord, and if you feel today that the world is shaking and you're trying to find out why all this keep happening, the shaking is not there to kill you. The shaking is there to free you. God told the people of Israel through Moses, I'm going to shake the world until my people are free. You're trying to figure out why this is happening. You think you did something wrong, and you're trying to find out what's going on in my life. Maybe I didn't pray hard enough. Maybe I didn't fast long enough. Maybe I didn't anoint my children enough. And you're trying to figure out why all hell is breaking loose, and why the government is tripping, and why leaders are acting up, and why the health system is falling apart. And you're wondering why. Why is my world shaking? He says, I will, oh, oh God. God said, I'll move heaven and earth. I'll leave 99 to go get the one. The world is shaking because we aren't free enough yet. You thought you experienced freedom, but after God finished shaking the world up, then he said, y'all got to let my people go. We are still in bondage. We still don't have everything we need yet. He said, I want my people to go possess the land. Ooh. Jesus, and until you let them possess the land and have dominion, I'm going to shake the world. That's the answer. He said, I'm going to shake it until it lets my people go. And until you let me go, it's going to shake. Oh, Lord, until you let me go, it's going to crumble. Until you let me go, things ain't going to work. You got to let me go. Oh, Lord, they think they hurting you by keeping you in bondage. They hurting themselves. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They threw them in bondage, and the people that threw them in got burnt up by the fire. They hurting themselves by keeping you in bondage. Oh, God, that's for me. The shaking isn't here to kill you. It's here to set you free. Oh, God is trying to free you. There's something happening in the atmosphere, and the powers that be don't want to let you go. They don't want to let you, they don't want to let your finances go. They don't want to let your health go. They don't want to let your family go. They don't want to let your children go. They don't want to let your marriages go. But he says, I'm going to shake the world until you let them go. I'm going to cause famine until you let them go. I'm going to cause plagues until you let them go. Hallelujah. And all, so this is Moses. And now Moses is gone. Moses is gone. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. And now we have Joshua, and I love Joshua. Oh, but before Moses left, if you go back and read it in Exodus, the Bible says that Moses laid his hands on Joshua. Moses laid his hand. This is a word to everyone in leadership. You should always be looking for some, who, who's the next one? Who's the next one? You're not going to be doing this forever. And I don't know if God told, you know, told Moses he wasn't going to make it at this point when he laid his hands on Joshua. But he, he laid his hands and anointed Joshua because Moses wasn't going to make it. And the reality is there was a generation that had to fall off before Joshua and the rest of the people entered into the promised land. Because God will not let complaining go into the promise. God will not allow it. Remember. A journey that was supposed to take a few days took years because people was complaining. Yeah. Oh, God, and I know, I, listen, I'm not trying to be insensitive. I know we're going through a lot right now. But he said, I will not allow complaining spirits to get into the promise. I'm not going to allow, because complaining is a disease, and one of the side effects is delay. If something is taking too long in your life, it's a possibility 
that maybe you complain too much. And if you don't complain too much, maybe the people you are around complain too much. And there's always going to be something to complain about. And the people that was in Moses' generation was telling themselves, maybe it will be better if we went back into captivity. At least we had somewhere to sleep. At least we had something to eat. At least they, it wasn't too bad. All of a sudden, they start looking at the bad situation and saying it's not too bad. But I thank God today for the Joshua generation. Woo, Lord, the Joshua generation is a generation that refuses to go back. Is there anybody watching on Facebook right now? Is there anybody in the house of God that says, I refuse to go back? I don't care how hard it is today. I'm not going back to the same devil I was just in the bed with. I'm not going back to the same place that was trying to kill me and take out my marriage. I'm not going back to that same job. There's not a dollar amount you can give me. Who the son has said? Free. It's free Hallelujah. It's free indeed. We have a Joshua generation say, I ain't going back. You got to remember, the Joshua generation was born in slavery. They don't have no ancestors to tell them how it used to be. This is their first taste of freedom. They said, I'm not going back. Oh, Lord, when my, I got a dog right at the house. When it was a puppy, we used to keep it in a crate because we was training it. And when we would get home and let her out, she would just start running around the house, not going nowhere, not running out, just in circles. And I used to think, why is she running? Like, she's just not even going nowhere. Stop running. You look stupid. You know what I mean? You're crazy. My mom said, how would you feel if you was locked in the cage for 10 hours during the day? What would you do when you get out? <laughs> See, this is, the question that, this is the question that was posed to Moses' generation and Joshua's generation. This is the question I'm posing to you. What are you going to do when you get out? Because you're coming out. But what you go, are you going to complain when you get out and say it was better in the cage? I felt safer in the cage. Or are you going to take off running? Joshua said, I am going to take off running. I'm not going to let nothing stop me. Joshua was so crazy. Can I tell you all about Joshua? That the angel of the Lord came to Joshua to give him instruction. And Joshua pulled his sword out and said, whose side are you on? My side or their side? Because Joshua was in the, if you come in and send me back to where I just came from, I'm not going, you're going to have a fight on your hands. He didn't even recognize the man of God. He didn't even recognize the angel. All he knew is I ain't going back. I don't know what we're going to eat, but I ain't going back. I don't know how we're going to make it, but I'm not going back. I don't know if I'm going to get this job from this interview. All I know, I ain't going back. I am not going back. We got to stop this complaining. Stop this. Remember, Moses, because of the complaining, Moses ended up having an attitude problem. God told Moses to speak to the rock. Moses smacked the rock with a stick. Moses was, God says, I'm taking attitudes out of leadership. Ooh, Lord. Ooh, Lord. For you to get this promise. For you to get this thing, I'm, I'm taking it away. We got too many attitudes in leadership. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You, you got an attitude, but you're on a praise team. You got an attitude, but you're an usher. You got an attitude with a collar around your neck. God says, I'm not going to let that mess walk into the promise. Attitudes and complaining. If you don't like working with people, maybe you should have been a carpet cleaner or something. Maybe this is the wrong deal for you. He said, I'm not letting... An attitude. Get the promise. Ooh, and I love that it was called the promised land. Because you got to understand, this was the promise since Adam. He said, go and subdue and have dominion over the land. The first thing God ever gave Adam was the land. And we lost, we lost it because of sin. But the promise is I'm giving it back. Ooh, Lord, because you can eat up a blessing, but you can't stop a promise. Ooh, Jesus, you cannot stop a promise. Moses died, but the promise is still living. Ooh, Lord, it don't matter if I die, the promise is still going to happen. If I lose my job, the promise is going to still happen. If my family leave me, the promise is still going to happen. If I have no support, no money, no backing, the promise is the promise. We serve a covenant God, and if he said it, it will happen. See, the blessing, you can eat it up. I can bless you with a sandwich. I can bless you with $100, and you can mess it up. I can shoot some dice and lose my money, but the promise has no expiration date. Ooh, Lord. I know you think you're getting older. I know you think things is, is passing you by, but the promise do not have an expiration date. The promise is yes and amen. You can't mess it up. You can't out it. You can't run away from it. The promise 
will happen. Ooh, hallelujah. And, the, and, and they, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Joshua pulled this sword out on the angel. And the angel said, I'm on none, I'm on none of y'all's side. I'm on the Lord's side. <laughs> Who are you talking to, boy? And, and yes, he was able to, to bow down and reverence God and receive instruction. But I'm just trying to get you in the mindset of where he was. God has just rooted out all the complainers. I just need to know who you are. I need to know why you here. Because we got a good thing going right now. Come on, Beyond the Veil. We got a really, really good thing going on right now. We in unity. He got all, he got all that rebellious spirit up out of here. And so who are you? Whose side are you on? Because we doing this thing together. Hallelujah. He said, I'm taking attitude. Oh, Lord, out of leadership. And, 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 and I was trying to be careful. I don't want to say, by saying Moses' generation because I'm not attack, attacking elderly people. No, that's not what this is. This is, a, this is a Moses mindset. It's a mindset. This is not about young people versus older people. No, 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 no. The Joshua generation is a mindset, a mindset of unity, a mindset of we ain't complaining, a mindset of we can do it. We are more than able. Remember they sent the spies and Joshua was one of them. And they said, we can take over this land. We can do it. This is the Joshua generation. Amen? Amen. So Moses is dead, but the contingency plan is Joshua. Amen? And I want to let you know, a contingency plan is a, it's like a plan B. It's something you put in place in the event that something might happen. But when God do a, a contingency plan, it's not in the event that something might happen. God already knows what's going to happen. It's a sure thing. So anytime something happens in your life, I just want to encourage you and let you know that it's part of the plan. Moses dying was part of the plan. You might have lost your job, but it's part of the plan. No matter what happens, it's part. Oh, Lord. It is part of the plan. I just want to encourage you today that it's part of the plan. Amen? So that I was read you Joshua 6. If you go back to Joshua 5, let's go there. So now they're getting ready for war. They're getting ready to fight. And they're going into a place that's undefeated. Oh, Lord. They're going to a place that's never been breached. God said, I'm about to do something in your life that's never been done before. No one in your, there's no blueprint. Stop asking people. Stop asking people how, how can your promise come to fruition. They don't know because it's never been done before. It's going to be exceedingly uh, abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. They are about to embark on something that's never been done before. They're about to break into a place that's never been broken into before. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Somebody need to receive that right now. I'm about to see. Because the things that have been done, to, done before, they won't satisfy my spirit. Because see, Let me tell you what we do. We do things that have been done before and call it God. It's been done a hundred times. And God helped me do it again. No, 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 no. You, there was already a blueprint in the path. You just follow what your daddy did or what someone told you to do. But the, the true blessing that God is releasing on his children in this season, has never been done before. He says, I'm going to do something big. You don't even, you, you can't even imagine. You can't even imagine how to begin, where to start, but the good news is, it's already yours. It's already yours. So they're preparing to fight the enemy, right? And if you go to uh, Joshua 5, it says, now it happened where all the kings of the Amorites who are beyond the Jordan of the West and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard the Lord dried up the waters of the Jordan for the Israelites until they had crossed over. Their hearts melted in despair, and there was no fighting spirit in them any longer because of the Israelites and what God had done for them. This is five. All right, this is Joshua 5, before six. So before the fight, <laughs> the, the enemy heard Jesus. what he did for you at the Jordan. Oh, you scared of the enemy. And the enemy is scared of you. Oh, can I encourage somebody to man up real quick? Can I encourage somebody to woman up real quick? God saw, or the enemy saw what God did in your life. He saw you go through cancer. He saw you go through unemployment. He saw you go through COVID. He saw you go through all these things, and he heard about it. He heard about what happened at the Red Sea. He heard about what happened at the Jordan River, and this is why the city was shut up so tight, because they were already scared of the people of Israel. I want to let you know today that the devil heard about you. 
Woo, Lord, they're having meetings, and it's not meetings to kill you. It's meetings to stay away from you. They so scared of you, and you got people leaving your life, and you're trying to get them to stay. They're leaving because they can't stay. They're leaving because they're afraid. These are the people that the enemy uses. And he said, I'm not going to. God said, or the, or the enemy said, I heard what God has done in your life. And I got to back up. Woo, you are walking in power, don't even know it. Armed and dangerous. Weapons of mass destruction. All the stuff that you went through. All the things that you overcame. All the stuff that you had to fight and you won. He knows your track record better than you do. You forgot about the fights you won. You forgot about that time you were sick. You forgot about the time you almost lost that baby. You forgot about the time you had no money and God made a way. You forgot, but the enemy did not forget, and he's scared. He's scared. See, what you need to do is remember. Oh, Lord, one of my favorite movies when I was a little kid was The Lion King. And one of the best lines in that movie is when he tell him to remember who you are. He didn't encourage him to do nothing else. All you got to do is remember. All you got to do is remember who you beat. All you got to do is remember what you beat, what you have defeated, what you overcame. You're not even supposed to be here. If the de- Listen to me, y'all. The devil ain't playing with you. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. And we blaming every other little thing on the devil, but that's the things he want to do to you. And if you haven't done those things, that means you're winning. He not just playing with you. He don't care about your little cup of wine. He don't care if you've gotten a car accident and got a new car. He's trying to kill you. This is what he's trying to do. He always want more. But according to Joshua 5, ooh, Lord have mercy, he already heard about what he did at the Jordan. He heard how he dried. God already did the impossible. Woo, Lord, in my life. He, he, see, he didn't hear about that little stuff that you remember. He heard about the big stuff that you forgot about. This is why I love every time David won a war, the Bible says he, he, uh, he would make a memorial there. He would make a memorial there so he can remember what he's, what he's done. When he went to go fight Goliath, what did he say? They saw going on him, told him, he little Goliath been fighting longer than you've been alive. He said, I killed a bear. Oh, you done killed a bear, boy. Are you crazy? You done killed a lion. You done defeated so many things. And the enemy is afraid of you. It's a fixed fight. I really don't even got to preach no more. It's over. It is a fixed fight. God says that the enemy is already scared of you. I know you don't have no backing. I know you don't have no education. I know your resume is about this big and it don't look like you deserve this thing. But the enemy is afraid of you. He's afraid of your little resume. Oh, Lord, he's afraid of your little bit of oil you got. I know it's just a little bit. You ain't never preached before. You ain't never done any of these things before. You only came up here and prayed about two times. But the enemy is afraid of you. He heard what God been doing in your life. He heard about how he rescued you. He heard about how God rescued your children. Oh, somebody need to take inventory right now of what God did. Ooh, because if you take inventory, you, you won't be able to sit down on him. If you start to take inventory, who I did somebody, you start taking inventory, you could be in the grocery store, you could be in the car, you'll have to pull over and tell God, thank you. We're walking around defeated because we forgot what God did. We forgot God saved my life. God saved your life. You shouldn't be here. People that went through what you went through are dead. You shouldn't even be here. The devil heard about you. He's so scared of you. He was so scared of a baby. He was so scared of Moses that he killed everybody in Moses' neighborhood. He killed every boy. in every. If if you was around death, that's because God was scared. I mean, the devil was scared of you. He wasn't after them. He was after you. That's how afraid he is of you. He heard that Jesus was being born, and he saw make they saw when anytime the government start changing all these rules and making all these brand new laws that don't make no sense, it means the devil is scared of you. They're trying to put something in place that's gonna take you out. They scared of the church. Because we got it. We got God. Well, somebody need to remember who they are. I'm talking to the church this morning. You need to remember who you are. Church of the most high God. Upon this revelation, he said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Remember who you are, church. 
You are built on a rock, on a firm foundation. It don't matter what shakes around me. I will be here. We will not be moved. We are still going to praise God. We still have the victory. God, hallelujah, Jesus. God is still God. He is still on the throne, God. I thank you. I thank you. Remember who you are, church. And then Joshua got his instructions. He got his instructions to walk around Jericho. And what I love about it is the first six days he told everybody to shut up. Because the last generation talked too much. The last generation had too much to say about what was going on in the body of Christ. The last generation had too much to say. They had too much advice to give. Ooh, Lord, help me. I'm going to get in trouble. Oh, and I'm not pushing away all advice, but sometimes you just got too much advice. You think the pastor should preach about this. You think the usher should wear this color. You think the praise team should sing this song. God says, what I'm about to do, I need people to be quiet. I need you to be quiet for a few days. <laughs> and just walk what happened when your walk was louder than your talk he said i want to see your walk this season oh god i want to see you forgive this season i know you got advice but are you able to forgive are you able to love the unlovable i want to see your walk hallelujah oh god i want my walk to be louder than my talk everybody this is why we get so much heat in the body of christ because a lot of us talking too much where's your walk can you forgive Oh, Lord, can you let some things go? Can you stop complaining? He said, let's just walk. Let's just walk. Don't say nothing but walk. And then he said, and then he had all the trumpets and all that. But one thing I like, he said they had the ark. They had the Holy Ghost. And I know this sounds old school. I know a lot of people don't talk about the Holy Ghost. But we ain't going to walk into this promise without the Holy Spirit. We're not going to walk into this thing after we get the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that after they receive the Holy Spirit, they receive power. You lacking in power? Woo, Lord, you better get your butt in this church and get some of this power. You better start speaking those things in your house. Stop just sending your family. Stop sending your wife to church thinking you wear the pants. Let me tell you something. You just sent her to church? Guess who got the power then? You must don't want none of it. You're going to send her and act like you pay all the bills and you got all the power and all the answers. Oh, no, sir. Oh, no, sir. We need the Holy Ghost to get this thing. Everybody got to get it. The little babies got to get it. Mama got to get it. And daddy got to get it. Woo, y'all better get this Holy Ghost. I'm so sick and tired of this. Can I talk about this for a minute? I'm so sick and tired of people just sending their family to church, just sending their wife to church. Can I talk to the men for a minute? And you want power. You talking about you walk in power. You wear the pants in the house and you paying all the bills. You have no power, Slim, until you got the Holy Ghost. You don't have anything until you got the Holy Spirit. He said, Joshua, I know you a fighter, but for this one, you need the Holy Ghost, boy. Woo, Lord, I know you've been wrecking for a long time. I know you done defeated a whole lot of enemies, but this one right here, shut up and take the Holy Ghost. Woo, Lord, just be quiet and take the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord, I know you think you wise. I know you think you got it all together, but you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. And they took the ark. Hallelujah. And they walked around with the ark. Oh, God. Walk around with the Holy Spirit. Oh, somebody need to drive, uh, drive with the Holy Ghost. Uh, go to work and walk around with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I promise you, you feel a little bit better. I know that wall look big, but I got the Holy. Oh, Lord, I got the Holy Ghost with me. I know that sickness look crazy, but I've been walking with the Holy Ghost. I know it looked like they about to overtake me and overtake my family, but I've been walking around. With the Holy Ghost. I've been walking around with power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And just like in the beginning, the Bible says as the Spirit over, uh, over uh, as the Spirit was floating over the face of the deep, where the Spirit is, you can talk and things start happening. And as they start walking around with the Holy Ghost, on the seventh day, they was finally able to make some noise. Woo, God. Because when the Holy Ghost is hovering, you can make some noise. When the Holy Ghost is hovering, you can declare some things. When the Holy Ghost is hovering, you can speak some things. Remember, the Holy Ghost was hovering around, and God said, let there be light. And the Holy Ghost started moving. The Holy Ghost started working and opening up doors. Hallelujah. You need a door open, get the Holy Spirit in your house. And the Bible says they made a loud noise. The trumpets start going. People start yelling cry, uh, cries of victory. And the walls came down. I'm here to tell you that God's promises are yes and amen. I'm here to employ you to take complaining out of your house. Matter of fact, we rebuke the complaining spirit 
right now in the name of Jesus. It's been causing delay. It's been making us move in slow motion. We've been moving so slow things we should have had a long time ago, been getting held up, but we've been complaining and working all at the same time. God says, just take the Holy Ghost with you. I got it. I got you. And the Bible says the walls came down and they overtook the city. They overtook the city. But I want to let you know today that it's already yours. Every promise, everything God told you that you would have, it already belongs to you. All you have to do is walk in it. Walk in it. I, I, I want to encourage everyone here to walk in it. The enemy already heard about you. He's afraid of you. You kick 2020's butt. You kick 2021's butt. And then you're going to stand in front of 2022 and be afraid. This is why all this craziness is happening. This is why all these new rules and new laws and things that don't make no sense is happening. The enemy heard about you. He's afraid of you. He was afraid of Moses. And start changing rules. Anytime you see these rules changing, that means someone's, someone was just born. Oh, Lord. Someone just woke up. Somebody just woke up that the enemy's afraid of. Someone was just born again. And he said, I got to start changing the rules and try to start killing people and try to start doing all this craziness because he's afraid of you. The shaking is happening to free you. And every promise is already yours. But I'm here to let you know all this is great. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't know him, because I have a promise that when I gave my life to him, he said, I will have eternal life, everlasting life. We're not going to die. We're going to live again. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm sorry to tell you, but this don't apply to you. The promises of God is for the people of God. But everyone, no one will be denied. You can accept him in your life today. And I promise you, if he accepted me, surely, surely he will accept you. It's not all you got to do is confess and believe. Confess and believe it. Say it with your mouth and believe it in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And, and then this, too, will also be applied to your life. So if that's you today, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, if, if you want to rededicate your life to D Jesus Christ, you feel like, you know what, I said the prayer, but, you know, this last year been crazy, y'all. I know pastors and ministers and worship leaders that had to rededicate. There's no judgment going on around here. This thing will shake your faith if you're not sure. It was shaky. It was, have you questioned it? Everything. There's nothing to be ashamed of. If I love that God is a God of a second chance, and I'll be lying to you if I told you I never rededicated my life before. I definitely had to lay on this altar and ask God to do it again and say, God, I'm, I'm doing it again today. So if you want to do it again, or if this is your first time, just repeat after me. Father, I trust you. I leaned on other things, but now I'm leaning on you. Lord, come into my life. Lord, take over my life. I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, please let us know. We just want to celebrate with you. Because your life will never be the same. I'm here to tell you, we all go through trials and tribulations. But he said, be of good courage, because I have overcame the world. I'm here to let you know that we are here standing behind you. We are with you. If you need prayer, you hit us up. There's information going across the bottom of how you can reach us. Amen. And we are here for you. We need you. We need each other. I need you. I need everybody that's in the body of Christ, and even those that are not in it, we are welcoming you because I need you too. Amen. Your life will never be the same. It will never be the same. Also, if you would like to give, that information is also 
um, in the thread at the bottom of the screen. If you'd like to give, you can't be God given. Look what God did for us. Look what he's doing for us. He's keeping us in the middle of a pandemic. We we going on three years almost. And we still here, guys. We still we are I'm one of the ones. I'm one of the ones. And I and and even and and I and I don't wanna count this lightly. I know some people done lost some loved ones, so have I. But I'm here to tell you, if you still got another chance, I just wanna ask you what you're gonna do with it. Because tomorrow's not promised. Amen. Amen. I love you. We love you here at Beyond the Veil. And we will continue to be praying for you and that asking God will continue to cover you and bless you. God bless.